So once we have our PS Remoting enabled, there's basically two different ways we can issue commands on our remote computers. The first one is using PS Sessions. Now PS Session is a one-to-one -one connection. Think of it like Telnet or SSH connections to a remote device. I connect to that remote device and I have a terminal window and I enter commands on that remote device and they are processed on that remote device, they're executed on that remote device and all I get back on my device is the results of it, it'll show me the results but all my commands are actually being entered and processed on the remote device. Another example if you're not used to Telnet is something like uh, go to my PC or remote desktop connection or something like that. I'm connecting to a remote device and everything I'm doing is on that remote device and I'm still using the mouse and the screen on mine, but all the processing and everything I'm doing happens on that remote device. Right, that's one-to-one -one remoting and that's done using the PS session commands. Now, I'm going to do this to my local host computer just because I don't have something else that I can play with. So I'm going to create a new PS session and the easy way to do this is the command enter dash PS session and then you'll put the name of the device and typically you need the full name of the device not a DNS alias or something like that although there are ways to work around that but we'll do the uh, actual name and this is going to be localhost so this will work and this will connect me to my localhost computer and here's how you're going to know your remote connected it's going to give you the machine name right there. Now because this is localhost this is actually running on my device. Notice however I've gone from the C colon scripts which is where I launched this command and now I'm in the default users uh, David documents so the default documents folder. Now everything I do here let me set location C oops, do, 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 do. let's try that again set location c colon backslash windows backslash system 32 all right that has happening through my uh, remote session so get process and you're going to see everything displays here but what i'm executing is actually being done on my remote device all right to get out of this i just issue the command exit dash ps session and that disconnects me and i'm back to where i started from no more localhost, so I'm not on a remote computer now, and I'm back to my C colon scripts folder. All right, pretty straightforward. Now, that's the easy way to do it. Enter and exit PS session. When you enter it, it will create a session. When you exit it, it takes you out of that session. But if we do get command, move my mouse cursor out of the way, dash noun PS session, and you're going to see that we have a bunch of other options here. Receive, remove, new, import, export, exit, enter, connect, disconnect. Okay, let's talk about what these do. So my enter and exit will create a session for me and take me into it. Enter does and then exit gets me out of it and disconnects the session. Now, I need to recreate that session, or if I go to recreate that session, it creates a brand new session for me. Now, if I want my sessions to be a little bit more permanent, this is where some of these other commands come in. So I'm going to do a new PS session. Actually, before I do that, let me do this real quick. I'm going to do get PS session. And you're going to see that I have no PowerShell sessions active right now. So I'm going to do new PS session localhost. And that's going to create a new PS session for me. It's going to give me a name, or an ID, a name, a computer name, computer type that I'm connected to, the state, availability, all right. So now I'm, I've got the session open, but I'm not actually in the session. You see, I'm still here uh, on my local machine. So get PS session will actually give me the information I just had. When you create a new one, it basically runs a get. So if I want to access this, I can access it by ID number. So I'm going to do enter PS session, oops. ID 8. And that takes me back to my default location. Remember when we did the uh, enter PS session before it took us to that default location. I changed locations but when I closed it it disconnected me and now I'm reconnected back to my session but it's a brand new session. So let's do this. I'm going to set location HKLM colon. That's just going to take me to my registry. And that's just to show us where we're at. So now if I exit PS session, 
Now because I created it using the new PS session command, now I still have it there. It's opened and I can go back into it whenever I want and instead of creating a new one it'll take me to my one that already exists. Enter PS session 8 and you're going to see I'm still in the HKLM. So it's still keep giving me that same session. Now I'm holding an open connection there. If I want to temporarily disconnect it, I can do disconnect dash move mouse out of the way PS session 8 and that will disconnect for, for me. You see now my ID 8 current state disconnected. So at this point I still have that session defined, I'm just not actively connected to the remote machine. If I want to reconnect it, I can do connect PS session 8. And now we'll see that our state is back open, so I've reestablished a connection to that remote machine. Again, I'm still not in it. So, enter PS session takes me back in. Whoops. Control C. Enter PS session 8, because I'm not trying to trying to create a new one. So I've closed and then reopened or disconnected and then reconnected and it still has me at my same location. So same session still. All right. Exit PS session is going to take me out. Get PS session will display it for me. I'm going to close PS session 8. I'm going to disconnect, not close. There we go. PS session 8. All right, now remember, we just did this, right? This is disconnected. I'm no longer holding an open network connection. I'm no longer using network resources. But my session is still there, so I can go back to it whenever I want. Now, if I want to get rid of my session, all right, so I've been hopping back and forth. I've been doing things on the remote computer. I've been coming back over to my local computer, going back and forth and back and forth, and I've had my session, but I'm done, right? I'm done with everything I want to do. I want to get rid of it. Then I'll remove PS session 8, and that will get rid of it. So now when I do get PS session, you'll see that I have no more predefined sessions. All right, so... Summarize real quick. Get command noun ps session. Enter and exit. If I just use these two, and those are the only two that I ever use, it'll let me create a session. Enter will let me create it. Go in. Let me run commands on the host to, or the remote device. Exit takes me out. Closed. I'm done. If I want session persistence, so I want to be able to hop in and out of the session without losing my place. Then I'm going to create a new PS session. And I can still go in and out of it using enter and exit. I can disconnect to disconnect it so I'm not holding uh, active TCP connections open. So free up network resources. Reconnect to get back into it. And then remove to get rid of it. And those are a lot. Now, some of the other ones import, export, receive. We're not going to worry about those at the moment. Usually, if what you're doing is a real quick, I need to hop into a, a remote computer and do something. By the way, this happens on the remote computer in the background. The user doesn't see that you're doing this. So, I mean, if they're sitting there watching Netstat or something, they'll see a remote connection come in. But they're going to keep working away in their Word document or surfing the Internet or whatever it is they're doing. They're going to keep working away. And your connection is not going to disrupt what they're doing. So you can connect in, make changes at the power or through PowerShell. You can do all the stuff you need to do. And then disconnect and you never disrupt them. So for one-off things, I'm going to hop in and do this real quick. Use enter and exit. If I need to go back and forth between a couple of devices and I don't want to lose my place, then it makes sense to go ahead and create a new PS session and then just remove PS session when you're done. Okay. 
So that should hopefully give us a pretty good idea of how we can use PS sessions for one-to-one -one remoting. And remember, I'm going to hop into a session uh, to a remote device. I'm going to run a bunch of commands there. I'm going to disconnect. That's what this is for. Now, there is a way to take a command or a group of commands, a script block, and push that to a whole bunch of different uh, computers. That's one-to-many remoting, and we're going to do that using invoke command, which will be the subject of our next video.